what you hear determines your reaction. What you hear can make you react. And the things we hear are designed by the enemy most of the time to make us react. And anytime you react, you become a tool of the enemy. Anytime you react, you become a tool or a vessel in the hands of the enemy, a vehicle or a weapon in the hands of Satan to be used to hurt somebody. And there are consequences for our action or reaction. Whenever you allow the enemy to use you to hurt somebody, by the reason of your position, your access, your influence, connection or wealth or power, you will answer. It's just a matter of time. every evil cycle in your life shall be broken that every evil cycle in your family every evil cycle vicious cycle concerning your health your finances your marriage your children your loved one home and abroad and our nation shall be broken in the name of Jesus <clears throat> that every evil cycle concerning our political sin shall be broken destroyed in the name of Jesus but right now we want to deal with any dead traps around us because irrespective of how much we follow the protocol which is critical and we must follow it looks like one way or the other there is always some avenue to get at you and one of the things we're going to have to pray over is the water we drink and the water we bath with that the enemy will not access us home and abroad worldwide by water we are, there's something about water we have to pray into in the future we have to prove our water but today we want to pray and break every dead trap around us and around our loved ones and those who concern us home and abroad let dead traps be broken in the name of jesus open your mouth somebody break dead traps we break dead traps we break dead traps we block dead traps any dead traps around us our sons and our daughters our families our loved ones them that concerns us home and abroad let dead traps be broken in the name of jesus block in the name of jesus now now the other thing we want to talk The spirit of heaviness the Bible says he will give us beauty for ashes and the garments of praise against the spirit of heaviness the spirit of heaviness is the spirit of grief is the spirit of sadness or heart sorrow or depression or oppression let any dark cloud that comes upon us as a spirit of grief, heaviness, sorrow, sadness, in the name of Jesus, let it be intercepted and bound in the name of Jesus. Spirit of grief, spirit of depression, oppression, heaviness, sorrow of heart, in the name of Jesus, be intercepted, intercepted, and bound in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Intercept. Bind it in the name of Jesus. Don't close your mouth. Don't just sit down there and lie on your bed. Get up. Walk around your hall and your bedroom. Open your mouth. Say something. Spirit of grief and heaviness is not the respecter of your office position your wealth or influence, access and who you are, it will attempt to come upon you. Demons and spirit have no respect for your office and position, your age, your experience or influence. Bind it in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Spirit of grief, sorrow, heaviness, depression, oppression, be intercepted, be accursed. And bound in the name of Jesus. Now, now, Isaiah 25, the Bible talks about the veil that covereth nations. 
We want to destroy every veil they've cast over the church and the leadership of the church, over our nations and the leadership of our nations. Every veil that has been cast on us to blind the eyes of our understanding, any veil they've cast on our health workers, on our scientists, that they will not be able to demystify the mystery of this virus, to allow it to spread and to allow it to bring panic and fear among humanity, to confuse us, for our lives to be at the mercy, at the mercy of this virus. In the name of Jesus, let the veil be destroyed. Let the veil be lifted of our leaders and our medical practitioners and our scientists. We destroy the veil over our political leaders, the veil over our churches and religious leaders responsible for division, confusion, strife among us. Let the veil be destroyed. Let the veil be lifted. Attack the veil. Attack. Attack the veil. Destroy the veil of blindness over our eyes, over the eyes of our understanding. We destroy the veil. We destroy the veil. We attack every veil of blindness. Let the veil be destroyed. Let the veil be lifted by the power of Jesus' name. Let the veil be destroyed. Now, now, I was told about somebody who was ill just a week ago at about 48, sent to the hospital and left him in the ambulance for two hours while they were trying to sort him out. And it looks like the health workers Whatever this place was, we're worried and concerned that he may have the virus and so they have to check him quickly before they can touch him, whatever. After two hours, they said they didn't have a place for him, so they sent him to another hospital. He was in the ambulance for an hour before a doctor came to examine him and the doctor did this and declared him dead. And they found out that it wasn't even the COVID-19 that killed him. We are living in dangerous times. And this COVID-19 is really playing with the lives of people. And it looks like it's gaining so much advantage that people are dying from other things. And we can't afford to hold our peace. We need to cry out. We need to intercept and we need to bind any manipulation going on with this COVID-19 around us and about our lives and the life of our loved ones, sons and daughters, home and abroad. Let every manipulation going on, even concerning our health and our medical results, home and abroad, we intercept and we bind the manipulation. Open your mouth, somebody. Say something. Intercept. Intercept. Bind manipulation about medical results, medical conditions of our sons and daughters, our loved ones, home and abroad, them that concerns us, home and abroad, let the manipulation be intercepted, intercepted, intercept, 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 bind, bind, override, overturn, override, overturn, override, overturn, in the name of Jesus. Otala Makadi Mahasa. Hey, 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 hey. Somebody open your mouth, say something. Malakatula, divine interception, 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 interception in the name of Jesus. Now, one more prayer. We want to deal with anxiety. Anxiety. Worry. Worry. People are not sleeping. Insomnias. People can't sleep. They are worried about this or worried about that. Anxious about this, anxious about that. Trouble about everything. Bible said he leaded me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. Your soul cannot behold which represent your mind, your emotions, your five senses. If the waters of your body and the waters of your life and your church and your nation is troubled, you cannot be at peace. The sheep can't drink from the streams 
when the stream or the river is troubled is when the stream or the river is at, is still that the sheep can drink we can enjoy and experience life as long as our waters are troubled today we bind anything that trouble our waters and we command our waters to be still and we command our souls and the souls of our loved ones women and brought to be restored we command the restoration of our soul as we steal our waters let the waters of our life be still open your mouth somebody he leaded me beside the still waters let our waters be still steal the waters command the waters to be still command the restoration of our soul let our souls be restored he restored my soul he leaded me beside the still waters he restored my soul let our soul be restored in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we command the waters of our families, our sons and our daughters, home and our brother and our nation. Let the waters of our political sin, financial and economic sin be still. Let it be still. Let our soul be restored. Let the souls of our churches, the soul of our nation be restored, restored, restored. Restored in the name of Jesus, He leaded me beside the still waters, He restored my soul. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, lift up your hands. Tomorrow, we'll continue in prayer at 5 30, 12 noon, 7 p.m. We'll be enforcing these words that there shall no evil befall us, no pestilence shall come near our dwellings. We will not be access. There shall be no openings around us. The enemy, the Bible says, six times he will deliver us. And on the seventh, no evil shall touch us. We command deliverances for our household and for all them that concerns us. Home and abroad, wherever our sons and our daughters and loved ones are, home and abroad, let them be delivered from the bed of affliction. Let them be delivered from harm's way. Let them be preserved. Let them escape the snare of death and the snare of this virus. In the name of Jesus, block all manipulation. Baruta Matisaya. Let there be clarity of the word of God. Let the word of God have clarity. Let there be precision. In Jesus' name, please be seated. Put your hands together. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for coming, those of you here. I'd like to talk to you this morning on a subject I entitled, What are you hearing? What are you hearing? The reason is because what you hear determines your reaction. What you hear can make you react. And the things we hear are designed by the enemy most of the time to make us react. And anytime you react, you become a tool of the enemy. Anytime you react, you become a tool or a vessel in the hands of the enemy, a vehicle or a weapon in the hands of Satan to be used to hurt somebody. And there are consequences for our action or reactions. Whenever you allow the enemy to use you to hurt somebody, by the reason of your position, your access, your influence, connection or wealth or power, you will answer. It's just a matter of time. And it's not just you. When a curse comes upon the head of a, a family or an individual, it goes through your bloodline. I was telling them that when John the Baptist took, when the king, Herod, took the head of John the Baptist, there was a particular curse that came upon Herod and his whole bloodline throughout their generation up to today. Because the blood of John the Baptist is still crying up to today. He's still crying against the man that took his life through manipulation of the daughter as a result of her mother's influence that asked for the head of John the Baptist, the prophet. We want his head. So you must be careful, especially when you have power or wealth or influence or access, you have to be careful what you use it for because the things you hear can make you to react. And what you hear determines your perceptions of people and your perception determines 
your decisions. And your decisions determine the outcome of your circumstances and your life. So you have to be careful of the things you hear because they are designed to make you react. And in the times we live in, there's a lot of reactions going on all over the place. And that's why we need to pray for those in authority because it is very important and it's dangerous to have power in the times of crisis. If you don't understand that reactions and decisions you make can expose you to the anger of God or to the mercy of God. You can either be exposed to the anger of God or to the mercy of God by the way you exercise power, influence, access, and wealth. Now hear me. In Genesis 18, the 20th to the 21st verse, there's something I want us to examine about what God and how God handles what he hears. Go ahead. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. You see, this is the way God deals with it. Now remember that the eyes of the Lord run through and flow all over the earth. So God knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. He declares the end from the beginning. So when the cry of Sodom came unto him, and the accuser of the brethren and of nations brought up a charge, an accusation against the nation or the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, God knew the truth about it. He knew the truth about it. But he did not react. And he came down to teach Abraham to show him how you respond to things you hear. And he said to Abraham, the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah has come up before me. And their sin is so grievous. The things I'm hearing about Sodom and Gomorrah is so bad. And even though I know the outcome and I know it is true, I will not react. I have come down to do due diligence. I have come down to investigate, to check things out for myself, to see whether altogether what has come up to me or what I've heard or seen is true or false. I will give them the benefit of the doubt for I do not take pleasure in the distractions of people. I don't take delight in the distraction or pain of people. So before judgment is executed, benefit of the doubt, I will check things out. Do you check things out before you react? What do you do with what you hear? Are you one and are you the type that comes to conclusion based on what you hear or see? God is not like that. Because anytime you hear something, you must know that you are on a trial. You're on trial. Because what you do with what you hear has everything to do with whether God will show you and your house mercy or judgment. It's very dangerous. And God said, Abraham, I am almighty. I am the mightiest of all the most powerful people. If anybody thinks they are mighty, I am the almighty. If anybody thinks they are power, I am the all-powerful. I am all that one can ever wish and want to be. And yet, I don't react based on things I hear. I have come down to investigate and I'm giving Sodom and Gomorrah the benefit of the doubt. Until I investigate things for myself, then I'll know what to do. Do you investigate? Do you do diligence? Those of you who have influence. Those of you who have influence with power. And to those of you who have power and access and wealth, what do you do with information? Do you just make conclusion or you take your time? Take your time to check things out, to investigate things before you act, or you just react because you have power 
I'm telling you, you will face the, impl the consequence of every decision you take for people, to people, whether for good or for evil, there are consequences. Come with me, please, to Acts chapter 17 and verse 21. All the Athenians and the strangers. Look at For it. all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. You see, all the Athenians and the strangers, all they did, they spent their time doing nothing but to tell tale bearers. Are you a tale bearer? Are you one that spreads evil report? Or you are one that carries good report. All they did was to tell and to hear what is new, what is new, what is new, what's going on, what's going on. If you are the type that is always looking for breaking news, breaking news, what is new, what you keep hearing. The other day I heard that something has happened to one of our former presidents. And the person was very, very confident. So I made a call and it wasn't true. And I called the person and I said, it's not true. I said, Papa, I'm telling you, they are lying to you, they are deceiving you. I know what I'm telling you. And I said, what is wrong with people? Even when you've done due diligence and you have the truth, they don't want to believe the truth. They still want to believe in bad news. And another person called me about the sitting president. Papa, they said this has happened. They flew the man out. He's not in town. So I called somebody and said, oh, the old man is fine. He's good. And I called and I said, listen, the man is okay, he's fine. But as for you, you just believe everything. And I said, what is wrong with people? How come we want to believe in evil report than good report? It looks like we are prone to evil than good. The Athenians and the strangers did nothing. They didn't spend their time in doing anything. But to hear and to tell, they want to hear what is new, what is new, what is going on. Why are you like that? Why are you an evil carrier? Why do you want to be an evil carrier, an evil vehicle? In the times we live in, God is watching all of us. He's watching us. And for those of you who delight in making conclusions and judging people and being critical of people based on things you hear and you see, be careful of the spirit that is in you, for God is not like that. The God you and I serve does not react based on what he hears or what he sees. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Let's see how faith and fear comes. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay, get it. So then faith cometh by hearing, number one. And then hearing again by the word of God, number two. So it's not enough to hear the word of God once. You have to keep hearing the word. You have to keep hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. It is the continuation of hearing you have to keep hearing that develops faith that develops faith it's not hearing once or hearing once in a while continuous hearing of the word is what produces faith and fear is the absence of faith and fear comes by hearing and hearing by the things you hear and hearing by from the enemy from the devil from the enemy and the enemy is very active through this COVID-19 to spread bad news and evil report but I declare in the name above every other name Jesus Christ the son of the living God that we will hear good news this coming year that we will hear good news this coming week that from this week to the end of this year, we will hear good news and not evil report. In the name of Jesus, if you believe it, shout yes and clap your hands. What are you hearing? Are you hearing the word of God? Or you are hearing from the enemy? Because there are two voices out there. The voice of the Lord and the voice of the enemy. The voice of the accuser who will accuse you and I day and night before our God to hold us captive, to make us captives of guilt that we are never able to stand up and have confidence to face God or to face him. But in the name of Jesus, let's hear and let's keep hearing the word. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 3 and 4. Isaiah 11 3 and 4. And shall make him of quick understanding. This was Jesus. He said, shall make him of quick understanding. I pray for you. I pray for your family. I pray 
for the leaders of our country that God will make us of quick understanding. Quick understanding. Go ahead. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. You see? Uh -huh. Neither reprove after the hearing of his he ears. He will not make conclusion or decision or react based on what he sees or what he hears. Are you the type that makes decision and conclusion and react and are critical of people, even your loved ones, based on the things you hear or you see? What kind of a spirit do you have? This was Jesus. He will not act, judge, reprove, rebuke, criticize, accuse, judge anyone based on what he hears or sees. Go ahead. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. Equity. Reprove with equity. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the, with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. He will deal with the wicked. People who have no conscience. The wicked. Who don't care about consequences. They feel like they can do whatever they want to and they can get away with it. You are joking. Get away with what? You are joking. It's just a matter of time. You have forgotten that time changes. Time changes. It is you today and it is somebody else tomorrow. We've seen kingdom rise and kingdom fall. We've seen kings rise and kings falling. We've seen the mighty, like the psalmist said. He said, I saw the wicked like a mighty oak tree. And he said, I went, I came back and diligently sought for him. And hold, lay, nay, behold, he was not. So take it easy. Time changes. I'm telling you. And be careful that your confidence in life is not derived from your access or from material wealth. Because if that is where your confidence is derived from, you have to be pitied among all men. Amen. Let's go ahead. Mark chapter 4 verse 24. Mark 4 24. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. Take heed. With what measure ye mate, it shall be measured to you. You see, he said, be careful. Be careful what you hear. For the conclusions you come to, the reactions you make, the decisions you make, how, react, how you react to people, others will hear things of you or your children and react the same way towards you. You reap what you sow by what you do with what you hear. So Jesus said, be careful, careful. Be careful of what you hear because if you are not careful, you will react in a way. You will take certain decisions and make certain choices that have serious implications on you and on your, on your family. It's just a matter of time. If you think something has befallen or happened to somebody and you, I can't understand why such a thing must happen to them. Are you God? The Bible says, judge not that you may not be judged. Before, behind every story, there is a story. You don't know the truth about what you have heard or what you've seen. So be careful. How are reacting? He said, to him that hears, if you are the type that loves hearing, you keep hearing. You keep hearing. You keep hearing evil reports. If you are the type that is open for junk, you always hear junk. I'm very careful what I hear before I go to bed. Because the last thing you, you heard before you go to bed will follow you into your dream world. So be careful. Every time breaking news, Every time, breaking news. You never put on television to hear anything good. But you want to hear what are they saying about the latest about COVID-19. That's all. Please watch Dominion Television on DSTV 364 for edification, exaltation, and comfort. Instead of always hearing bad reports. Amen? Okay, let's look at Matthew chapter 16. Verse 13 to 16. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You see, Jesus, by the word of knowledge, knew that his followers were being confused about him. What was confusing them? What they were hearing in town 
about who Jesus was or his true identity. They defined him wrongly. They said he was John the Baptist, Jeremiah, one of the old prophets risen from the dead. And yet he, was, he wasn't any of the things they were telling his followers. Sometimes people can confuse you, even about your archbishop. Are you also one of those who follow this archbishop guy? Are you also one of those who go to that church? Can't you use common sense? These are not the days of just living by common sense. These are the days of going, be exercising, using common sense, but adding the wisdom of God and adding faith. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. So as much as common sense is necessary and critical, we need more than common sense. So are, you, are you one of those who follow Duncan Williams? Are you one of those who go to that church? They've criticized me for 43 years and they are still criticizing me. They've said everything about me. They've made me change even my haircut and my dressing and everything. And their haircut is the same from the days of old. And their dressing is still the same. They've criticized me to change everything. As for them, they are still yesterday, today, and forevermore. They haven't changed. Masters of criticizing others. They have everything to say about others. They have nothing good to say about anybody but themselves. And if that is who you are, you have a problem. You are an instrument of Satan. You are a tool and a vessel and a weapon of the devil. And it's a matter of time. You are inviting God's anger and judgment and not mercy. And the times we live in, ladies and gentlemen, we all need mercy. And if you want mercy, you must show mercy. For blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And if you don't show mercy, you are not qualified to obtain mercy in the day of need and in the day of trouble. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter who you are. There come a time when everybody needs mercy. And when that day comes, you will only obtain mercy if you've shown mercy to somebody. So learn to be merciful. For blessed are the merciful, he shall obtain mercy. Amen. Go ahead and put your hands together. Acts chapter 9, verse 13. Acts chapter 9, verse 13. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man. Underline the word. I have heard. What are you hearing? By many, not by few, but by many. I can justify my argument because I've heard from many people. The fact that you've heard from many don't mean it is true. When they wanted to crucify Jesus, they influenced people. When Pilate said, between Jesus and this guy, Barabbas, who should I deliver up to be crucified? They influenced people and everybody said, free Barabbas, free Barabbas, free Barabbas, crucify Jesus. And nobody said, nobody spoke out for Jesus. Everybody said, free Barnabas, free Barnabas. And he freed Barnabas and crucified Jesus. So the fact that you have heard something from many don't mean it is true. So be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Go ahead. I have heard by many. I have heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to the saints at Jerusalem. You see, look at verse 14. And here he hath authority from the chief priest mm -hmm. to bind all that call on thy name. 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. You see, this guy Ananias was a disciple. And he was chosen of God to disciple Paul. To become a mentor and a spiritual father to Paul. But he missed it. And you know why he missed it? Because he depended on what many were saying about Saul's past. Everybody has a past and everybody has an issue. And that's why we must be careful about things we hear. And he said, Lord, are you sure about this guy? This guy, are you sure about him? Are you sure about this Duncan Williams? Are you sure about Saul? For I have heard by many concerning this man. He's not a good person. He's done a lot of evil. And evil is following him. Yeah. 
He was telling God that, God, are you sure about your decision? As if God doesn't know what he's doing. And God said, I know everything you've said. Go your way and go and do as I've told you. Because of what he heard of Saul, he failed the assignment and the test. He couldn't be a spiritual father and a mentor to Saul. I have fathered and been a mentor to the good, the bad, and the ugly of so many people. And I've been criticized and questioned several times about how can you say he's your son? How can you cover this person? How can you mentor this? And I hear and I say nothing. And as time goes on and people change, metamorphosis, and they become better, the same people who criticize and question me come around and say, Papa, you are a real father. So you have to be very careful of people. And one time, after here, we never heard of the name Ananias again. Until one time they were talking about Paul. And they said, a certain Ananias. A certain Ananias. Why? He failed the task because he had heard by many. As leaders, we have to be careful. Everybody is a leader in your own right. You need to be careful of what you hear. Because what you hear can make you react. And whenever you react... You expose yourself to the judgment of God. Especially what you do with what you hear about people will determine whether you will obtain mercy from God or you will encounter the anger of God. I'm telling you. So be careful. For God is the judge of all flesh. And you might think you have power. You might do. But there's a, the almighty who is powerful than you. And he will deal with you. It's a matter of time. He will deal with you and your family. He will deal with those you love the most. When Pharaoh refused to let the children of Israel go, God said, if you don't let my son go, he said, he said, Israel is my son. He's my firstborn. And if you will not free my son, I will kill your son. Hey, hey. Yembala kawahan ilayamakutanda bazaka ilakabanduli avandu lawahasia. Let our sons go. Let our daughters be set free that they might serve the Lord. And if you not let our sons and our daughters go, if you not set them free, then let yours be taken and be smitten in the place of ours. Shekutuli bikadala hasia. That men may know that the heavens do rule in the affairs of men. Amen. Come with me if you please. To 1 Kings 19, verse 2 and 3. 1 Kings 19, verse 2 and 3. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, uh -huh. So let the gods do to me, and even more so, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Look at something. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. You see, when he saw, so whenever the enemy speaks, whenever you hear from the enemy, he paints a picture in your mind, in the eyes of your mind, for you to see what he's saying. So when Elijah heard, he saw what Jezebel wanted to happen to him. He saw himself dead like one of the prophets of Baal. So what you see, what you hear, will also determine how you see and what you see. I was dealing with one of our members years ago. And he was very ill. He won't go to the hospital. So the family called me. And I had to go to the house to talk to him. He said, Papa, I'm not going there. And I said, you, you will go. Because you can't be well staying that you have to go there. And later on, he came through and said, Papa, he said he saw himself in a mortuary at that hospital, so he's not going there. And I said, I rebuke that projection. I said, it's a projection. It's an ill will. And let it be blocked and accursed. I curse it with the curse of the Lord. Let it be accursed. Let it be intercepted. And I said, go to that hospital. You come back cure and you will not die. Your body is not going to that more. He went to the same hospital and he was healed. He was well. He was made whole. And 
His body wasn't sent to the, hospital, to the mortuary. You know what the enemy was doing? The enemy was putting fear in him through projection of things he was seeing to keep him in the house so he won't go to the hospital and get help. The times we live in are dangerous times. Very dangerous times. The enemy is speaking. There's a lot of voices out there. The voice of the Lord and the voice of the enemy. Whose voice will you hear and believe? Whose report will you believe? There are many voices out there speaking on social media. You must be careful of what you are hearing because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Fear comes by hearing and hearing from the devil. So be careful of what you are hearing. Be careful. And Elijah saw. When he heard, he saw. Projections. So the enemy will send you messages through dreams and vision. Will send you messages through social media. And when you hear, he will paint a picture of exactly what he wants you to see. You will see his desires concerning you and your family and loved ones and your nation. When he speaks, he paints a picture. This is an election year. We are hearing all kinds of things. And some of the things we are hearing is designed to paint a picture for us to see an evil outcome and a doom. But I declare on authority of the scriptures in the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, that let those who desire evil for this nation and let those who for the sake of power want to go to any extent to bring violence and chaos and unrest to this country let the angel of the Lord strike them and their family let the angel of death visit them and their dwellings but let the waters of Ghana be still in the name of Jesus Amen let's go ahead come with me please to 2 Kings chapter 2 from verse 1 to 13, quickly, 2 Kings chapter 2, 1 to 13. And it came to pass when the Lord would, would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, uh -huh. that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. Sometimes the leadership you follow. Sometimes the ones that are supposed to guide you can even confuse you. Here was Elisha following his master Elijah. And Elijah discouraged Elisha. But he was so determined to follow to the end. And said, I'm not a quitter. I'm not, I'm not a quitter. I will not relent. So even though his master tried to discourage him, he still said, I will keep following. Go ahead. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. You see, so now from the master himself came the sons of the prophet. Sons of the prophet. Those in the prophetic ministry. Brethren in the church. Brethren, loved ones who confuse you by what you hear and by what they are saying if you don't take heed to what you are hearing. You can be confused even in the church, even by men and women of God. Are you also one of them? So you are going to church, eh? You don't use common sense. But I'm telling you, this thing we are dealing with, it can even get to you in your house by the water you are bathing with and the water you are drinking. It can get to you by all kinds of means. So it's not by being afraid. It's... it's, it's Fulfilling all righteousness, following all the protocol, but at the end of it all, you must have faith in God. You must believe in the scriptures than ever before. Makuda maluta wasaya, aye tu la kimba hasa, isaya du la wakinda, mandelu tikamba da, perianda kibahan, walandi kitumba la hasikiata. Ah, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. And then the sons of the prophet, not unbelievers, not politicians, not the media. See, every time we are accusing all kinds of people, but these, 
These are brethren, sons of the prophet. They had in-house information and they came to discourage him and said, listen, stop following this Duncan Williams. So stop following this church, 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 church. Take care of your life and your family. Care about yourself. I was talking to a guy the other day. He came to see me and he's working. He's going to town doing business, making money all over the place. And after we talk, I say, hey, I haven't seen you in church. He said, oh, Papa, hey, the virus, Papa, the virus, the virus. I say, hey, you are afraid to follow money. You are afraid to go to work. You are afraid to do everything. But you don't have faith to come to the house of God. This is not the house of COVID-19. This is the house of prayer for all nations. Yeah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and say yes. The sons of God. Confuse him. Go ahead. The sons of the prophet. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee. For the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I would not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. Again, the master discouraged him again. Sometimes leaders can even confuse you. You are following this person who must lead you and guide you. And he himself is discouraging you. He's part of the test. In the times we live in, God is watching all of us. He's watching our love for him and his work. He's watching our faith in him, in his word. And our faith in the work of God. He's watching our commitment. He's watching our giving. If we only tithe and give in good times, then it's not faith. It's in times of difficulty that we know whether we have faith or not. So God is watching, even in this time. God is watching all of us. Go ahead. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. You see, again, they got to Jericho. After the master he was following, discouraged him. Now, the sons of the prophet, not politicians, not the media, not social media, brethren, 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 sons of the prophet, people within your own house and family, came to discourage him. And he heard from the brethren, that are you, 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 are you correct? Are you sure about what you are doing? Are you sure about the man you are following? Do you know what we've heard? Do you know the things we've heard about this man? Do you know the things we know about him? The man is finished, oh, he's finished. He's not anointed, crown. He has lost his fire. Do you know what is going on with his life and his family? Are you sure about this man you are following? And he said, I know everything you are saying. Hold your peace. Go ahead. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here. For the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided, either and thither so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha said it, saw it. And he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. You see, when you go home after lunch, you can study this scripture. It's amazing. The master, the man he was following, discouraged him when they came to Jordan. Then 50 of the sons of the prophet, when they saw that they could not discourage him, that he was determined to go all the way. These are the days of going all the way. All the way with Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. 
The Bible said to him that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. They cross over to the other side of Jordan. And when they go to the other side of Jordan, his master said unto him, now that you've passed the test, everybody's faith will be tested. I know you say you believe God. And I know you say you love the Lord. But these are the days where our love for God and our faith in God and our faith and commitment to the work and the house of God is being tested by the times we live in. And God is watching you and I. Like he came to Abraham and said, Give me now thy son, thy only son Isaac whom you love. And God said, let me see if you love me more than the gift. If you love me more than your children. And Abraham passed the test and God said, now that I know that you care about me and my business and agenda, than the blessings and the provision, I swear by myself that in blessings I will bless thee. Some of you, you think you are blessed. You are not yet blessed. Pass the test and see what God will do. If you have an idea of the things God has in stock for you, you will never hesitate when it comes to doing what God requires of you for his work and his house. For the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has entered the hearts of men what God has prepared for those who love him. If you love him, you will prove it. If you have faith in God, the times will reveal it. If you love God and his work, the times we live in will reveal whether you are playing with God or you mean business with God. And Elijah, Elijah said to Elisha, if you see me go, that means if you can endure to the end of the season, if you can endure, you have what you have requested for. And when he saw him, he took away his own garment, threw away his own mantle and anointing and gifting and said, this is not important. What is important is the mantle that has been tested and tried, that of my father. Bible says, let not him that is going to the battle boast, but rather let him that has been to the battle and has returned and remove his armor boast. And he said, I haven't tested my mantle. I haven't been through this part before. I need something that has been proven and tested, something stronger than mine. So he threw away his own talent and gifts and experience and said, I will go for the mantle of my father. And he said, my father, my father, father, father the chariot of Israel and the husbandman thereof and he threw away what he hasn't tested which was his own and he went for that which has been tried and tested these are the days to hold on to that which has been tested and tried I don't trust you if you haven't been tested and tried I don't care what you have where you stand in society and your influence or your material wealth I don't trust you unless you've been tested and tried you are dangerous in conclusion, Philippians 4 8. In conclusion, finally, brethren, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, he said, whatsoever things are true, and whatsoever what things, things are, are honest, honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, he said, whatsoever things are. Are of, of good report. If there be any virtue, and if, if there be, be any, any praise, virtue, go ahead. and if there be any praise, think of these things. He said, even if they are true, even if they are just, even if they are honest, even if they are pure, even if they are lovely, even if they are of good report, is there any edification or exhortation or comfort about it? Does it? Edify? Does it bring praises to God? Does it glorify God? If it does, then focus on those things. But if not, let them go. Don't hold on. To, don't dwell on them. What are you dwelling on? What are you hearing? What are you building your perception and choices and decisions you are making in these trying times out of? Ladies and gentlemen, these are the days to take heed to what you are hearing. Please stand on your feet and let us pray. Are you clapping? Lift up your right arm. From the three on to the three
Hallelujah. and nations we proclaim your lordship over our sons and our daughters and our loved ones and all them that concerns us home and abroad we proclaim and enforce and superimpose your lordship over the sick at the hospital over those over those on the bed of affliction over those on dying bed and we acquit and discharge them from dying bed acquit and discharge those on dying beds right now open your mouth put your hands together acquit them discharge them from dying beds at the hospital home and abroad open your mouth discharge them we discharge our loved ones we discharge sons and daughters we discharge those who concerns us the name of the lord and your church in nations at hospital on dying beds on the bed of affliction let them be discharged and acquitted open your mouth put your hands together discharge 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 Acquit, release, discharge, let go, set free all those on the bed of affliction and on dying bed. Let them be acquitted, let them be released, let them be discharged, let them be let go. We let them go, we let them go. In the name of Jesus, we free them up. Now, now, this week, we command good reports, we command good news. We declare we will hear good news. We will hear those of you who have done the COVID-19 test. Even though it has taken time and the results are not coming. We declare a good report. We declare that when the results come, it will be good and not evil. It will be negative and not positive. We proclaim a good report. We secure and obtain a good report. For everyone that names the name of the Lord, for every loved one, son and daughter, home and abroad, for everyone that concerns us, our nation, the political scene, the media, open your mouth, command a good report. Put your hands together, command a good report. Command a good report. Command a good report. Command a good report. I can't hear you. Command a good report. A good report. Obtain a good report. Now, in the name of Jesus, any storm, any media storm, any politica, political storm, any financial storm, the enemy has programmed for God's people, home and abroad, from the regions of the sea and the underworld, wherever it's coming from, let it be intercepted and bound in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Intercept. 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 Every storm. Intercept. Political storm. Intercept. Family storm. Intercept. Financial storm. Intercept. Media storm. We intercept. Financial storm. Intercept and bind it. Intercept and bind it. Intercept and bind it. In the name of Jesus. Now, there are a lot of evil forces taking advantage of the COVID-19 and using it to carry out all kinds of agenda that they couldn't carry out before COVID-19. Demons have been emboldened and they are doing all things, all kinds of things to kill, steal and destroy and to create stress and unrest for families. In the name of Jesus, we interrupt or intercept every agenda and every evil forces legions of demons who are on the loose in town using COVID-19 to exert on people to afflict families to kill to steal and to destroy to create anxiety fear unrest on the account of the blood of Jesus we intercept the activities we, we revoke their powers we intercept the agenda open your mouth 
Put your hands together. Intercept. 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 Bind. Intercept. Bind. Intercept. Bind. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. We'll continue prayer from tomorrow, Monday. It's the seventh week. And we want to believe God. Seven is the end of a cycle. It's a divine number. That by the end of this seven week, beginning from tomorrow, every vicious and evil cycles concerning your life, your family, your loved ones, your finances, your health, this house, and this nation, on the political scene, economic, financial scene, that the evil cycles shall be broken. That evil cycles will come to an end. Let any evil cycle ongoing in our life and our family and loved ones and in this church and this nation, let those cycles come to an end. Open your mouth. Decree. Command. Evil cycles come to an end. Don't just sit there on your bed. Don't sit on that chair. Get up. Walk around. Open your mouth. Command. Declare. We command the end. The end. On the account of the blood of Jesus, we command and decree and declare the end of evil cycles. The end of vicious cycles on the political scene, on the financial scene, on the national scene, on the economic scene, on the religious scene, on the social scene, on the media scene. We break evil cycles. We destroy demonic evil cycles concerning our health, the health of our loved ones, family, sons and daughters, home and abroad. Let evil cycles break, 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 break. We break evil cycles. Now, lastly, let every ill will and projections and manipulations of the enemy through men and women to hurt us, to disadvantage us and our families and our loved ones, let it be intercepted and overturned. Say intercepted and overturned. Evil cycles, ill wills, demonic projections, manipulations, we intercept and overturn. Intercept and open your mouth. Put your hands together. Intercept. Overturn. 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 In the name of Jesus. Now. Now. Lift up your right hand. Say, I shall not die. Say, I will not die prematurely. Say, I will not die. Say, me and my house and all them that concerns me shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. Say, I will be among the remnant. Me and all them that concerns me will be among the remnant that remains after COVID-19 is gone. We will still be here serving the Lord in the land of the living. Say, there shall be no loss of any life or anyone that concerns me or this house. I will be among the remnant in the name of Jesus. Ah, see, a thousand shall fall on my side, ten thousand on my right hand. It shall not come near me. Only with my eyes I will see and behold the reward of the wicked. That is the word of the Lord. You believe it, put your hands together and give God praise.